Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Tinkerbell Cake Giant Cupcake Tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make this gorgeous prize piñata Tinkerbell Cake using your giant cupcake mould. For those of you that follow my channel My Cupcake Addiction, you'll know that I love coming up with all sorts of weird and wonderful ways to use your giant cupcake mould that aren't necessarily restricted to just the giant cupcake. Tools and equipment that we will be using today, I've got a sharp knife, I've got an offset spatula, if you don't have an offset spatula, just a regular knife will do. I've got a serrated knife, quite a long one, so a bread knife is best. A fondant roller or a regular rolling pin will do. I've got some of these plunge cutters. Now you don't have to have plunge cutters, but I picked these up on eBay for about three to five dollars a set, posted from China. These are gonna make your life as a decorator so much easier. What they do is they actually cut out the shape of the leaf, and when you plunge them or push them, they imprint all of the veining. So you don't need these for this tutorial, but they will make it a lot faster. I'll also be showing you how to make some leaves just using some circle cutters. I've got my Tinkerbell doll. Now I've unrobed her, so I've taken off her skirt and also her shoes. Make sure that you take off any accessories that may fall off and get stuck in your cake. And I've also just wrapped the base of her in some cling film. I've got an iced cake board. I've iced mine in green fondant with a little bit of yellow ribbon and we do have a whole tutorial on our channel which shows you how to ice a cake board. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below also. I've just got mine today sitting on a cake turntable. I've got a little bit of our perfectly pipeable buttercream frosting and I've tinted that green. I'll leave a recipe link to that in the description box below. I've picked out some green and yellow M&Ms. That's going to be for our surprise pinata effect and that is a bit optional. You don't have to have the candy in the middle. It's completely up to you. I've got a bit of green fondant. I've got some, just some Wilton Gold Colour Mist and that's just going to be to give us a little bit of fairy dust at the end of our tutorial, so it's purely optional, you don't have to have it. I've got some of that frosting, the Perfectly Pipeable Buttercream Frosting, just in a piping bag with a circular piping tip, it doesn't matter what size. And it's up to you if you want to use a piping bag, you will be able to achieve the same result just using your spatula, but the piping bag just makes it a little bit neater and a little bit easier. I've got my giant cupcake. Now I've used vanilla and I've baked that using the methods that I show you in my giant cupcake basic series. So that shows you how to fill your giant cupcake, how to line it, how to bake it, and how to extract that cupcake out, getting it ready to this stage so that you're ready to decorate it. I'll leave links to those tutorials in the description box below as well. So let's get started. Now the first thing that you want to do, apart from wrapping your Tinkerbell and getting her ready, is you want to cut out your leaves. So start by cutting out all of your leaves and you'll see here, I've got all of mine sitting on a tray under some greaseproof paper. You're going to need quite a few leaves, so don't be shy with them. And the reason that we're cutting them out before is we don't want them to be really, really soft, but I have covered them so they don't dry out and crack. But we want them to stick nicely to the buttercream frosting and the buttercream frosting will start to crust. So if we don't have the leaves ready, ready to stick on pretty well as soon as we've put that frosting on. It's gonna make it a little bit difficult and you're going to find that you, your leaves don't adhere properly as you get to the top of the dress. So to show you how to do those little leaves, just take some of that green fondant and we'll roll it out. So just give your fondant a little swipe around. You wanna roll your fondant quite thin because she is going to have a couple of layers of this in places on her dress as we layer those leaves. Now, as I said, I'm gonna show you two options here. Here you've got just a circle cutter. Most people have got scone cutters at home. So you just want to cut a circle and pull that circle out. Out of that circle, you just want to cut, I guess, the inside of a moon shape out, and that's going to give you your leaf sort of a shape. You can do different sizes, you can do sort of different widths, different thicknesses, and then you want to take your knife and you want to use the back of your knife because it's going to be a little bit fatter and it's not going to cut through, and just run it over the top and give yourself a couple of little leaf-like textured pieces. So that's really cool as just a basic leaf. It's a really easy leaf that everybody can achieve. But like I said, these plunge cutters, they have saved my life. So it only took about 15 minutes to cut out all of those leaves that you saw before. You push them down, rub them back and forward, and then you plunge and lift. Now that leaf's gonna come up, corn flour on the back stops it from sticking, pop it out, and there you've got a really beautifully detailed, perfect little leaf. I've also gone with a rose style of leaf because it gives you that nice little textured edge which is going to kind of give us the rough Tinkerbelly kind of look on the dress. So you want to cut out the majority of those larger leaves and then I've just got a smaller leaf cutter and this is actually a different style of leaf but it really doesn't matter and I'm just cutting out just a few of those smaller leaves and that's just going to be to edge around her torso or the top of her dress. 
Now, you want to take your giant cupcake and we're going to start preparing this. So I do actually show you how to carve a giant cupcake, but I wanted to show you myself in this tutorial because it's a little bit different. Because we're going to use this as the dress of a doll, normally I would cut this top flat. So you'd cut off this round dome, but we don't want to do that here. We just want to give it sort of a flattish base. And that's going to be so that we lift it up a little bit higher because Tinkerbell, she's going to be quite tall. So we want to make sure that the dress is the right size for her. So as always, I like to cut off all of my crusty edges. So just cut away any of your little brown cooked edges to reveal the lovely white cake underneath. All the way around and also the bottom. Now not only does that take away all of those sort of crunchy edges, it also takes away the ridges of the giant cupcake to give us more of a smooth skirty type sort of a look. All right, once you've taken all the brown off your sides and off your bottom, you want to just run around the top. Now be careful here because you don't want to sort of crack off any of the any of the edges if you can. Just very, very lightly and very carefully trim off the brown at the top. Now we're going to do the same for the top and we're just going to trim off any of those crusty edges but leave this bottom piece for now. You'll notice when I trim the top, I actually rest the top of the cupcake that I'm chopping down onto the mat underneath me and this is to give it support so that you don't crack off whole sections of the edges of the top of your cupcake. All right, now when it comes time to do this underneath section, what I want you to do is once again just very, very lightly trim away just any of that brown but leave the mound on there. All right, so we've finished trimming off all of our little brown edges. Now, you want to just take the, I guess, the bottom of your giant cupcake, and we're actually going to be turning this upside down like this. So what we need is a flat base here that Tinkerbell can rest on, but just don't take off any more than you absolutely need to. So I'm just going to cut off just a bit of a, a circle there, a little bit more just so that I know that I've got a flat enough base, but not going all the way to the edge. So I've got sort of a, you can see there, I've actually gotten almost an extra two centimetres just by not going all the way to the edge. And that actually brings the dress up off the cake board by that two centimetres. So you can cut that again in the centre. We're just going to cut it right across. And it doesn't matter if it's not particularly even. Don't be too fussy with it. Now, for the top, once again, we want to keep as much height as we can. So keep referring back to your little Tinkerbell doll to make sure that she's going to, I guess, not have, not be too tall for her dress. So once again with this bit, we just want to take as little as we can off, just cutting around. Then we're going to sit that back on top and we're just going to trim, I guess, in line here. So we're going to trim around the edges there and just shape that top bit so that it's the same sort of a width at the top there as that bottom piece. I always use a serrated edge knife here because I find it gives you a better cut. A clean edge knife doesn't seem to saw through the cake as easily. It doesn't seem to give you as nice of a Nice clean cut. All right, so just checking again the height. That's looking pretty good, so I don't want to take much more off that height at all because that's coming pretty well perfectly in line with her little waist there. And I really, I don't particularly want her feet going all the way to the bottom if I can avoid it. So I'm just going to take off just a very, very tiny, tiny little top. Just there like that. Now, for the surprise pinata effect, what we want to do is we want to cut our circles. So we've got a circle cutter and I will leave dimensions for the circle cutters in the description box below. Alright, so I want you to take your circle cutter and just insert it into the centre of the bottom piece of that cake. If you turn it, as you turn it, it's actually going to cut away that piece of cake. So go all the way through to the bottom and then we're going to do the same again with our next piece. So so long as you do it roughly in the centre, your holes should be roughly at the same place. All of this uh, vanilla cake that's left over, I'm going to be using to make some delicious cake pops with. So definitely don't throw it out. Perfect, all right, so there's your holes in the middle. Now with this piece here, it's quite large and the top bit here still has a little bit of that crispy edging. So I'm going to go through the bottom, once again in the middle, be really careful of this top section because it's quite a bit thinner so it's not gonna have as much stability. I'm gonna just hold it in my hands and twisting again, I'm gonna core that out and then I'm going to go through from the top on this side. I'm going to actually use my sharp knife here and I'm just going to cut a little bit narrower, so not quite as big. And I'm using my sharp knife because that circle cut is going to put a bit too much pressure. Beautiful. So you can see there we've got a nice big hole there and then I've caught out just a smaller hole. So then you can take your knife there and just hollow it out. I'm pretty happy with that, that spot on. By the time we put a bit of frosting on and a little bit of fondant, that is the perfect height for this Tinkerbell. 
So once you put frosting in, you can adjust the height a little bit. You can put a little bit more to make the dress a bit higher or a little bit less to make it a bit lower. So long as it's roughly the right size, you'll be able to put your doll in there, no problems. So we'll just have a little bit of a tidy up and then we'll come back and get decorating. All right, so now it's time to get to the fun part. So we wanna start stacking this cake on the board. Once we start stacking it on the board, you wanna take care not to make too much of a mess because we don't wanna mess up that board. So I'm going to take the absolute bottom piece and I'm just going to use my piping bag. I'm going to put a reasonably thick layer of buttercream frosting and that's so that it's going to kind of spill out the bottom, really stick it to the board and just fill in that little gap around where we've raised our skirt up a little bit. So I'm just going to flip that over and it's going to go right in the centre of the board. So just push it down, just going to sort of smush down that buttercream. Don't worry if the buttercream comes out the front, out the sides, that's totally fine. We're going to have a whole lot of leaves covering up any mistakes that you make. Also, don't worry if your giant cupcake cracks around the edges, stick it together, put the frosting in. It's going to be totally fine. It's happened to me a million times. All right. Now, because I know that my cake, I guess, is about the right size for my Tinkerbell, I don't want to put too much frosting in between these layers. So I'm just going to pipe on a little bit and just spread it out. Now you do want to make sure here that you are covering as much of the cake as you can. All right, once you've got your first little layer done, you can pick up your second layer, sit that on top. I'm going to turn mine around because it just makes the height a little bit more even. So I may have cut it just on a slight angle when I actually cut the, the cake first. Try and make sure that you keep the height as even as you can. A little bit more frosting here. Now as you're doing this, you can bring the frosting over the edges. Just act like a bit of a crumb coat and that's just going to trap any crumbs in there. Whenever I make one of these giant cupcakes, I prefer, I have all of my own recipes, but if I'm going to do a sponge, I prefer to use a packet mix sponge. They just seem to be a little bit sturdier and a little bit less crumbly. Otherwise, I like to use a mud cake. So a mud cake mix is always going to be just a bit more sturdier and a bit more forgiving when you're carving and when you're cutting. So particularly if you're a beginner, I highly recommend either a packet cake mix or a mud cake. Now I'm going to just make sure that I've got the most even sort of a height there as I can. I'm pretty happy with that. Now here's kind of the tricky bit. So I'm going to take some of those M&Ms and as I mentioned, the whole surprise pinata thing, totally up to you. I just like it because I think it just adds a little bit of, a little bit of wow factor when people cut into the cake. Her feet are quite skinny and they're going to move the M&Ms out of the way for us. So in go those M&Ms up to, I'm taking them to about the line of the top of our giant cupcake and then I'm going to push her in. I'm actually going to take her wings off at this point too because they're just going to get in the way. So we can put those back on at the end. Push her in and I can feel her little feet going in there to those M&Ms. Now once she's in there and she's got her, I guess, she's got her bottom in the cake, you're just going to have to sort of poke in the rest of those M&Ms. So this can be a little bit of a slow process but just fill up any gaps around her front and around her bottom. So I'm just sort of pushing down on those M&Ms because I really want to, I guess, force them in there a little bit. Be careful not to press on the actual cake, but get as many M&Ms as you can. It's going to add to our nice piñata spill effect when we cut the cake open. Now I actually can't get in around her bottom, so I'm just going to make a small incision into that cake just to give me a little bit of space so that I can get some M&Ms in there. Perfect. So all up I used about a cup of M&Ms. Now I'm just going to just make sure that I'm keeping the crumbs off this cake board. All right, now taking that piping bag again, I'm just going to just just pipe a little bit of that frosting sort of in the gap there. This is where the piping bag is good because it forces the frosting where you want it to go. And then we can take our spatula and just smooth that off. And this is just a very, very rough coat of that frosting. I should also mention that when I was choosing my Tinkerbell and with any doll cakes, try and choose the ones that are not wearing cloth clothing on their top half. If you can get the ones that are wearing like a plastic outfit, it just makes life so much easier and it means that you don't have to take all of their clothes off and then make them an outfit out of fondant or risk getting buttercream frosting into their cloth dresses. So now that I'm happy that she's pretty well covered, just really roughly, I'm just going to take a little bit more of that frosting and just make sure that she's coming all the way down to the bottom of that cake board. So you just want to make sure that you've got just a bit of a decent covering. And once again, it doesn't have to be neat. All right. I'm going to keep my buttercream handy. 
We're going to have a little bit of a tidy up and then we're going to come back and we're going to add all of those leaves. She's going to be just about done. All right, so as I mentioned, you do want to work relatively quickly here before that buttercream frosting has time to start crusting. So I have cut out all of my little fondant leaves and I'm going to start sticking them on down at the bottom. So they're going to stick straight to that buttercream frosting and as I stick them on, I'm going to just let them kick out at the bottom there. So a little bit higher than that. We just want to flick them out at the bottom. That's just going to give us a little bit of texture. So you can see there, I've just flicked it out a little bit and we're going to layer those all the way around. This is actually kind of the fun part because most of the hard work's been done. So as you layer them, you just want to overlap them slightly, keep them all at the same height. And because we've cut those out a little bit in advance, they will be starting to firm up. So you're not dealing with a really soft and floppy piece of fondant that's going to sag back down. You're actually dealing with something that's got enough shape to give our dress just that nice little bit of kick and that nice little bit of poof, I guess. So really when you stick them down, you're just pushing down on the top part of the leaf and you're letting the bottom part, I guess, hang free and kind of kick out a little bit. So there's your first row. Now the only little bit that I'm not happy with is this tiny little bit just here. That's just a little bit of that green frosting peeking through, so I'm just going to use a sharp knife and I'm going to pick it up and get rid of it. And we can't see it anymore, so you're not seeing any of that light green coming out through the dark. So on to our second layer. Now with your second layer, you kind of want to go in the middle of the join of your leaves. So where you've got two leaves overlapping, stick down another one and once again, just flicking up that bottom. So pushing the top and letting the bottom flick out all the way around overlapping. All right, so just a couple of things to be mindful of. When you're actually placing those leaves, do try to keep the top of the leaves at about the same height. And if your buttercream should start to crust on you at any stage, mine's still quite fine, but if you find that it starts to crust, just take a little bit more and just kind of go over it. Don't add more, but you can kind of almost like scrape off that top layer and add a new fresh top layer. So if you find your buttercream starting to crust and your leaves aren't sticking to it, that's how you can just freshen it up. Don't think Tinkerbell's used to wearing quite so many clothes. She's really prancing around in her little skirt and her little leotard. All right, so we're just about finished our layering of our leaves. We're right up to the waistline now. And you can see the gorgeous effect that you get there by just letting those leaves dry out just a little bit beforehand and then flicking them at the bottom so that you get that really nice, kind of the, I guess the rough kind of effect. It's very, very similar to the bottom of Tinkerbell's usual skirt. So I'm just gonna add in the last few leaves. So all the way up to her waistline there. So with those little tiny leaves, I'm gonna attach them one by one and I'm just gonna take just a teensy, teensy little bit of frosting and just on the back of each leaf, just use that frosting to attach it down. So the frosting is just going to act like a little bit of a glue. Don't put too much on there. I think I'll actually use the end of my sharp knife just to put a little tiny, tiny dot. And we're just going to give her a bit of a waistband of those smaller leaves. And this cake is going to go down to my nieces, Charlie and Ashley from Charlie's Crafty Kitchen. And a lot of you, I think, already follow Charlie's Crafty Kitchen, but she's my niece. Ashley's four, Charlie's seven, and they have their own little cooking and cupcake channel. It's very, very cute. All right, so that is the end of our epic leaf layering. There were a lot of leaves, but the effect has been so, so worth it. You can have a look at your Tinkerbell there as we spin her around. She's still without her wings. Now what we're gonna do here is we're going to take this Wilton Colour Mist. Now, if you guys haven't used these before, they're almost like an airbrush in a can, I suppose. So if you're a professional decorator, you might have an airbrush at home, but these are a really great alternative if you don't. With these ones, you really want to spray them from quite a distance away and there will be overspray. So just be careful what's behind you and in front of you. So I'm just going to give it just a really light shimmer and I'm going to sort of concentrate more on this top section of the cake rather than on the bottom because I don't want to get too much of it on that board. So just shaking and standing back as far as what am I, about 30 centimetres away? I'm just going to give it just a few short bursts. And I'm not aiming too close to her face or to her hair or anything. Really just giving it just a little bit of definition and a little bit of shimmer. So you can see there what we've done with that shimmer. It's really just given us almost like that little bit of a sprinkling of pixie dust. So finally to finish our Tinkerbell off, we're going to take those wings and just reattach them. So there you've got your finished Tinkerbell Fairy Princess Giant Cupcake Surprise Piñata Cake Tutorial. That is a mouthful of a title. I hope that you guys love it as much as I do. When you cut into that cake, all of that candy is going to come spilling out. 
the birthday girl or boy is going to have a great doll to keep. They're going to remember this cake forever and it's a really easy cake to replicate. A little bit time consuming on the leaves but an absolutely stunning centrepiece for your next party. If you want to dress that up a little bit, I would recommend maybe just a few little flowers, sugar roses or piped roses just around the base between the skirt and the board just to add a little pop of colour. Thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.